Welcome. The um, purpose of this short series of videos is to look at um, dialogic ways of using Zoom um, rather than transmission ways of using Zoom with one person talking and others simply listening. Although I have to say that in this first video I'm doing most of the talking. Um, what we plan to do in this little series is to show you different ways in which um, you can get your students, whether they be children or adults, um, to engage more fully with the kinds of materials that you want them to engage with um, so that the use of Zoom becomes interactive um, rather than simp simply receiving, uh, receiving information. Um, and so within these little episodes we're going to show you different ways of doing this. Uh, we're keeping the videos deliberately short uh, in order that you can move between them. So in this first one um, we're going to have a look at um, uh, the ways in which you might encourage your students uh, to be sociable, to talk with one another in a sociable way um, and to think about using breakout rooms in uh, as a sociable introduction to what you're doing um, so that they get used to social discourse before they get used to discourse for learning. Um, and in this episode we're going to have a look at that but we're also going to have a look at the kind of rules for talk that you might want to implement and we're going to have a look at the kind of structures that you might want to use when you are um, using breakout rooms. So that's the purpose of this. So what I'm going to do now is to share a screen and I'm going to run the session um, as if I was running it with essentially a new group of students. Okay. Welcome everybody. Um, this is our first time on Zoom, so um, it, it's new for us all. So I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about uh, Zoom etiquette, general Zoom etiquette. Um, first is please mute your microphone when you're not speaking um, because that helps with things like buzz and whir and feedback and so on. So it's just a general thing. But obviously if you want to say something, um, then do unmute and say what you want to say. We'll be working in things called breakout rooms where I, I place you in a room together um, to do particular things. So be ready to be sociable with one another. Um, uh, you're terribly sociable people, so I imagine that will be easy. Um, it's quite useful to use the gallery option, which you'll find in the top right of the screen if you want to see everyone. Um, we're quite a small group today, um, but that doesn't matter. If you want to use, see everybody, you still need to use the gallery option. Uh, please don't use the record function. Uh, you'll find that for some of you it won't work anyway, uh, but don't use that because we have to have permissions in order to do that. And importantly, when you're in your breakout rooms, I want you to let others speak um, as well as speaking yourself. If you're anything like me, you want to do all the speaking, but actually uh, it's helpful to let others speak. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to immediately go into some breakout rooms and um, test them out, see how they work, see how uh, that you'd see how they work as well. And we're going to spend a few minutes in there um, just having a discussion. And um, as you've just getting to know one another, um, we thought it would be quite useful if you had a couple of topics that might start you off and then you can talk about whatever you want. Um, so if you're if you're at a, at a loss for what to talk about when we start the breakout room, um, then you might want to talk about what's your latest must see box set. Um, you might want to talk about what you've learned to cook recently in lockdown um, uh, or anything like that to get us all started. And once you've got to know one another, we don't mind what you talk about. You'll get a one minute warning in your breakout room of the end of the session. And in breakout rooms, it is possible for, um, for people who are hosts of the Zoom to drop in, um, which is a bit alarming, um, but we won't be doing that during this, uh, during this particular session. Okay, so now what I've done there is I've set out the breakout room. We're not actually going to go into breakout rooms, um, but we are. Uh, but you can get the idea that essentially, if you want people to talk and learn together, um, then they must have had some time for some social talk. Um, obviously, the need for this kind of thing gets less 
if you're working with groups over a period of time. Uh, but many of us are working with groups on a one-off basis. Um, we don't know, the groups may have just come together, convened and not be convened in any other way. Um, and so they don't know one another particularly well. So you may wish to do this. Um, it is important in terms of developing a dialogic approach to the use of Zoom, um, that people feel comfortable in, in talking to one another. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at things that we may talk about um, with groups in order to encourage them to talk productively for learning together, which is quite a different thing. Um, they may not be used to using rules for talk in their own classes um, or in their own student groups, um, but it is rather important that they get used to this idea. If you have a group which you're with for a long period of time, you can gradually embed these ground rules for talk which we're going to talk about and you can, uh, you can keep coming back to them, you can emphasise different ones as they move into, uh, into talking with one another. Um, but if you're working with a group, even if you're working with a group once, just running through the ground rules for talk and being clear about why this is helpful in getting them to learn together can be very, very helpful indeed. So what I'm going to do now is how I would introduce this um, to a particular group, um, the group that I've got in front of me now. So before you go into the uh, breakout room in order to do the first activity that we're going to do um, around objects, then I just want to talk to you a little bit about how we can encourage the kind of talk in the breakout rooms which we know is productive for learning. All of the research in this area suggests that there are particular ways in which people can talk together in order to be able to interthink, is Neil Mercer's word, and there's a picture of Neil Mercer on the screen there now, in, uh, and this idea of interthinking where we exchange ideas, we think about one another's ideas, and we can co-construct ideas together is a very important idea if you as learners want to get the most out of these breakout room experiences. Um, so what would the kind of talk that we are we are going to encourage you to try out when you're in the in the breakout rooms is called exploratory talk. Neil Mercer and Douglas Barnes have called this exploratory talk. Um, Neil divides talk into three broad ca ca um, categories. Um, Exploratory talk is one, cumulative talk where people broadly agree um, and say, oh yes, that's a good idea, yes, that's a good idea, yeah, I don't, th yes, I think so, yes, I think so, is another form of talk. And disputational talk where people are at one another essentially, oh no it isn't, oh yes it is, um, is another form of talk. You don't get any of these forms of talk in their pure form in any situation, it's always a mixture of all three. But what we're trying to encourage with you when you're going into the breakout rooms is that you try to develop as much exploratory talk with one another as you possibly can. And so the kinds of things that you might be saying are the things that we have on screen here. What do you think? Why do you think that? I think that and giving a reason for it. Oh, but if that's the case, but surely if uh, those kinds of things or shall we do this or do you remember doing this or what do you mean by that? So that you're beginning to encourage not only you're beginning to develop not only your own ways of talking to explain yourself and to justify what you're saying. You're beginning to use a ways of talking which will encourage others to come forward with their ideas so that they can be debated and, and knocked about. Um, and so what we're trying to do here is the kinds of things which when we're working with children in particular um, are known to help them develop their learning and get more productive solutions to problems. And so we're asking them to explain their reasoning, propose, justify and elaborate their ideas, acknowledge, revoice the word, the ideas of others, revoicing being, oh, so what you mean is, is this, is it? Um, asking focused questions, really important, very difficult to do. Um, referring back to uh, previous ideas and saying, well, you said that a minute ago. Um, proposing alternative views, working towards agreement. Now, quite often groups don't get to agreement. That's absolutely fine. 
But what's been found in the research is that if they work towards agreeing, they have much more productive conversations. So we're going to, uh, so when you're in your groups, I'm encouraging you to follow some basic ground rules for talk. Um, and these are, these are ground rules that have been developed in classrooms um, for many, many years. Um, and as you can see, they relate to the things that I've just been, talk uh, I've just been talking about. Um, the idea is that what we want is people to feel confident enough to express their ideas. We've all been in a situation where we, we wish we put forward ideas and then suddenly um, suddenly we find that uh, somebody else has, has nabbed that idea or uh, it comes up as a really good idea later on. Um, and we want to encourage people to get involved in this kind of talk. And by setting rules like this, saying, try in your, in your groups as, uh, as far as possible to share, to listen, to respect people's ideas, to ask questions, to justify and so on. All of the things that are on here really, really helps. So when you go into your breakout room, um, I'd like you to think about the kinds of ways of talking which might help. Now, as you've just been introduced to these, that's a bit overwhelming, uh, but nevertheless, um, we'll, we'll give it a go. Does anyone have any particular questions about ground rules for talk at the moment, or are you just happy to give it a go? There's, there seems to be, yeah, a bit of nodding. That's okay then, fine. Right, we'll, we'll just give it a go when we go into breakout rooms and see, and just see how well you do at doing that. The other thing that you might like to th that we might like to think about and that, that I will actually get us to do when we go into the breakout rooms is think about what our roles are in the talk. So we've talked about the kind of talk that you might expect. But now we're thinking about the structuring of the of the task and what kind of roles we might expect. And so this is a way of democratizing group work to make sure that everybody has a role and is able to be involved. And we're going to do this today by having a look at things which are have a very grand name of Kagan structures, but basically means giving people a role within a, within a group. Um, and when you're doing this with anybody else, you may wish to, you, you may wish to do this in face-to-face -face or online. And today we're having a look at how it might work online. So it's a very simple idea really when we think about it. In working together, um, it's important that one person is the chair because they're the person that's gonna facilitate the discussion, invite others to speak and so on, politely remind people to collaborate, um, be generally in charge. The recorder keeps notes of the conversations, asks questions to clarify key points. It doesn't mean that these people in carrying out these roles can't put their own ideas forward as we've just been talking about with the ground rules for talk um, but it does mean they have a specific role in relation to the group the mirror is the person who reflects on the conversation can highlight key points can remind people of what they were doing the magnifying glass observes the conversation and intervenes when the conversation goes off task and that's bad enough in a uh, when you're face to face but definitely when you're in breakout rooms conversations can veer so the the magnifying glass is an important role and then the microphone is the person who in this situation is going to feed back the collective thoughts of the class so when in breakout rooms um, if you happen to be the microphone you you need to pay particular attention to when the uh, when the session is going to end when the breakout room is going to finish um, so that you you're sure that you've collected the ideas and um, and you're able to um, feed those back to the collective group when we come back now there's an awful lot there there's stuff about ground rules for talk how you're going to talk together and there's stuff about adopting a particular role um, but what we found is that if we try and persist with these ideas in breakout rooms, actually you get much more productive conversations. So I'll end that there. Um, what I would then get people to do is give them a task or a, 
uh, a, a thing to do um, because they either need a problem or an issue or, a, or an object as we will see in order to reflect on as a basis for their dialogue. But the point of this was to take us through um, two particular things which might well help when people move into breakout rooms and encourage them to be more dialogic in, in the way in which they interact with one another.